Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look into Jewish gangster Samuel Levine also known as Red. Unless they have a keen interest in the American mafia and organized crime, the average public might not be familiar with the moniker Samuel Red Levine. However, this mysterious individual, distinguished by his blazing red hair and noticeable freckles, is said to have been involved in two crucial crimes that are of great significance in mafia history. Under the directives of prominent figures Lucky Luciano and Meyer Lansky, Samuel Red Levine served as a member of an elite team of assassins responsible for the notorious murders of Joe the Boss Masseria at a restaurant in Coney Island, Brooklyn, in April 1931. Just five months later, Levine played a significant role in the demise of Masseria's rival, Salvatore Maranzano, the revered Sicilian capo di tutti capi or boss of bosses, who established the rules and hierarchy of the American iteration of La Cosa Nostra that persists to this day. Levine himself is reputed to have personally inflicted a fatal stab wound to Maranzano's heart. It is worth noting that Jewish individuals were employed for this high-profile assassination since Maranzano, much like many of the traditional Sicilian dons, held no associations with them and therefore would not readily recognize his assailants. While the names of Luciano, Lansky, Masseria, and Maranzano have ascended to legendary status, Samuel Red Levine has largely faded into obscurity. The mystery surrounding Red Levine's destiny heightens the suspense. Levine avoided jail or a violent death, unlike many of his contemporaries, which left his last whereabouts a mystery, if not entirely eluding the attention of the general public and police authorities. It is believed that Levine was a key member of Murder Incorporated, an infamous group of contract killers operating out of Brownsville, Brooklyn, who carried out a stunning number of mob-approved killings throughout the 1930s. It is noteworthy that many of these hired killers were Jewish and it is even said that Levine was so strongly committed to his religion that he kept the Sabbath and avoided carrying out any assignments on that holy day. Following the early 1940s, a period during which the majority of Murder Incorporated's members either perished or faced legal repercussions for their extensive criminal activities, Levine seemingly vanished into thin air, evading the indignity and inconvenience of imprisonment. His ability to evade capture and subsequent disappearance only adds to the enigmatic nature surrounding Red Levine's ultimate fate. In a late 2009 New York Times article, Sanford L. Smith, son of Izzy, the proprietor of a mortuary on Manhattan's Lower East Side, made the astonishing assertion that Samuel Red Levine had worked for them in the mid-1960s. Red was one of the few individuals from Murder Incorporated who managed to avoid being killed or imprisoned, Smith told the publication. He was on our official payroll to show that he had legitimate income. Red would receive a $200 weekly salary. Smith's father, Izzy, appeared to have connections to renowned Jewish mobsters such as Meyer Lansky and Bugsy Siegel, both of whom hold prominent positions in the annals of Jewish mob history. However, at the time, Izzy merely informed his son that Red was an outside salesman. By the 1970s, it seems that Red Levine had transitioned to a different occupation. An article from the Village Voice in March 2001 suggested that Levine had involvement with the newspaper and mail deliverers union during that decade. This indicates that even in the 1970s, Jewish racketeers played a significant role within the union, highlighting Levine's potential involvement during that period. According to the article, law enforcement officials, longtime union members, and mob associates say that Levine cleverly allowed each of the city's five mafia families to have a piece of the newspaper delivery action, which included bootleg sales of stolen papers as well as loan sharking and gambling among drivers. Beyond these few, generally unverified allegations, little is known about Red Levine, in fact, even his birth and death dates are unknown. Pat Hamu noted on his blog that Luciano's favorite was Levine, who he hired for a number of tasks. According to Luciano, Red was the best driver and hitman I ever had. According to Hamu's testimony, Samuel Red Levine was described as a man with a strong commitment to his orthodox Jewish beliefs and deep religious convictions. Levine is said to have worn a kippah, also known as a yarmulke or skullcap, underneath his fedora on a regular basis, signifying his strict observance of his religion. This specificity emphasizes Levine's steadfast adherence to his religious principles. Samuel Red Levine, if he indeed left the life of a mobster after Murder Incorporated was disbanded in the early 1940s, managed to avoid the gruesome fates that befell many of his fellow gang members despite having the ability to commit calculated and professional acts of violence. Louis Lepke Buckalter, the former leader of Murder Incorporated, met his demise in the electric chair at Sing Sing in 1944. Albert Anastasia, a notorious figure known for his murderous tendencies, was assassinated while receiving a shave at a Manhattan barbershop in 1957. Abe Kid Twist Rellis, who turned informant, 
mysteriously fell to his death from a Coney Island hotel window while under police guard. Additionally, Harry Pittsburgh Phil Strauss, Harry Happy Mayone, Frank the Dasher Abandondo, and Martin Bugsy Goldstein all faced execution at Sing Sing. If Levine chose to step away from his former lifestyle, it appears that he evaded these violent and fatal outcomes, instead prioritizing his devotion to his wife and children back in Brooklyn, leading a household that adhered to kosher practices. One of the most notable incidents involving Levine's contemporaries was the shooting death of the infamous Bugsy Siegel in Beverly Hills in 1947. This act was carried out on the orders of the Mafia, as Siegel was accused of embezzling funds from a Las Vegas casino, Meyer Lansky approved the hit. Levine, on the other hand, may have managed to outlive all of his fellow mobsters by deliberately maintaining a low profile or leading a quiet and law-abiding life. It is plausible that Meyer Lansky, who himself lived a remarkably long life, provided advice to his old friend on securing employment, avoiding trouble, and leading a long and peaceful existence. Lansky, at the age of 81, passed away in 1983. The details of Levine's later years and ultimate fate remain elusive, leaving room for speculation regarding how he managed to evade the violent ends that befell many of his counterparts. It is possible that he heeded Lansky's guidance, enabling him to live a life removed from the criminal underworld. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.